and welcome to another video. Today I've decided to do a review of just one book and it's an LGBTQ classic. I've got a whole series of videos about individual LGBTQ classics and I haven't filmed one in a while so uh, I thought it was about time that I did that. Um, all of this year I'm going to be taking part in the Invisible Cities Readathon and that is a year long readathon which um, it's not hosted by me, I'm not claiming any of the credit, I'll drop a link below to all of the um, the hosts of that and it's just to encourage people to read more books in translation and from books that maybe we wouldn't traditionally read books in translation from. And one of the countries that, that they um, selected for January was Argentina and all of the books that I'm picking for all of the countries are LGBTQ books. That's a very roundabout way of saying that I managed to find Kiss of the Spider Woman by Manuel Puig um, which is a, a book by an Argentinian author, um, translated into English. I've, I read the translated into English version. You can obviously read it in the original as well. Um, this is a book that I'd never heard of. There is also apparently, um, I say apparently, I've now watched it, but there is a film, um, Kiss of the Spider Woman, which a lot of people seem to either have seen or definitely know about. I did not know about the book. I didn't know about the film. I'm completely clueless, um, but I found this because of their read readathon, um, and I read it in January, and I wanted to give you my thoughts on it. So the book um, tells the story of two men, one man called Melina, who is in prison for, uh, I think, corrupting a minor is what it says in the book. I think that's just a euphemism for being gay. And the other guy, um, Valentin, he is in prison for political sedition. He's basically a socialist and uh, a troublemaker in general. So during the novel they get to know each other, they develop an intimate friendship with each other. Melina is a big fan of old Hollywood movies and he spends, I don't know why I'm still holding it off, I'm gonna put it down, you know what it's a review of. Uh, Melina spends um, a significant proportion of the book telling Valentin about the films that he likes, these old Hollywood movies, kind of uh, narrating the story of these films. The format of the novel is quite unusual, it's told entirely in dialogue um, it does have some footnotes, and the footnotes uh, are mostly about the history of homosexuality. It um, doesn't have any dialogue tags, so you can't tell who's speaking. I mean, it's not obvious uh, as soon as you start reading. Um, and there are sections of it which are kind of stream of consciousness sort. There are other types of formats as well, but I think to give... To tell you what those are would maybe give away kind of what happens at the end, so I'm not going to say what they are, but it's, a, it's quite an unusual format, I think. So my thoughts overall are that I found it really actually quite enjoyable. Now, I wasn't expecting to find a book written entirely in dialogue enjoyable, but actually I, I did actually quite enjoy it. I really enjoyed the, um, the kind of slow development of their friendship throughout the novel. I thought it was like, it, it was just kind of nicely drawn out and nicely developed. The, the movie sections, of the book where Melina is kind of narrating uh, his, his favourite movies to Valentin. They don't really add to the plot at all but I think what they do is they add to what we know of Melina and they really kind of add to him as a character. The footnotes, I did read all of them because I thought no I'm going to read this whole book. Um, some people have said that the footnotes are irrelevant but I'm going to read them, I read them. I did think they were, they were completely relevant. Uh, I'd love to know if you've read it and what you thought of them. I thought they were interesting but they weren't really something that I didn't know about anyway. Melina as a character is a little bit of a stereotype in the book but I'm going to talk a little bit more of that a little bit later I think um, so I won't focus on that just now but I did think the portrayal of him was quite realistic. Um, it, it, he seemed like a very complex and, and real person actually whereas Valentin I thought that he was actually a bit of a cliche. I thought he was a bit kind of he was a bit two-dimensional for me. It was a little bit of a kind of you know, like a one note personality. And I actually, I didn't really believe him like as a kind of revolutionary person. I didn't, I didn't really believe in his character. I thought it, it, he was as much of a stereotype as Melina was a stereotype. It does have uh, a nice sort of twist, kind of, I don't know, maybe about two thirds of the way through, which I won't, I won't spoil and tell you what it is, which I thought was uh, quite good. And the ending was just, I guess, what you'd expect. Um, the dialogue, the fact that it was written in, in dialogue with no dialogue tags, like I said, I thought I wouldn't enjoy it. And I thought it would be quite difficult, but actually it was quite easy to follow. Quite often they do say each other's names to each other, which is quite handy. And, and it does really help you kind of follow. But I never really had a problem um, following the dialogue and follow, trying to work out who was talking. And 
despite the fact that it is just in dialogue, the, the characters are quite quite vivid and you, you quite get a really distinctive voice from the characters. So it actually really works, I think. So like I said, there is a movie of it which I hadn't seen when I read the book. And then several people mentioned to me uh, about the film and about um, the kind of representation in the film and I was really intrigued so I, I rented a copy from Google, thanks Google, and I watched the fo the, the foovie? That was film and movie squished together. Um, so I watched I watched the Fumi, uh, Fuvi? Anyway, I can't remember what I just said. Uh, what am I talking about? Yeah, I, I watched the film and I thought it was interesting. Um, one thing that I kind of did notice is uh, Melina's kind of the stereotype of his personality, which is why I kind of save him for the for the end here. I thought that in the book he was he was a bit of a stereotype, but he's quite camp in the book, and I guess that's the word that you'd use. He's quite he's quite camp. He's quite effeminate. In the film, it's like it's really amped up and it's really emphasised. And what I found really interesting, and I definitely thought about this quite a lot after watching the film, is whilst that's a stereotype. It is quite a realistic portrayal of some kinds of gay men. Unfortunately, it is, especially at the time that it was written in the 70s, it is, uh, or it tends to be, the only kind of portrayal we get in books of that era. And that can be quite frustrating. Um, I guess the, the kind of big uh, contrast that I, I can think of is a novel like The City and the Pillar by Gore Vidal, which is like the complete opposite. It's a really, really masculine gay man represented almost as a kind of like um, demonstration of how not all may, uh, not all gay men are effeminate. So what's really interesting, I think, is that it's a really complex thing of how do you represent that effeminacy, which is very real for a lot of gay men. How do you represent that with that without that then becoming a stereotype? And I think it's because if you only see that represented, if you only see that, um, then it can become a stereotype, and then it can become a problem. The fact that now we have a lot more nuanced representations is a lot better. But for the time that it was written in, um, I think it is. It does come across as quite offensive because there really is only kind of like one way that he, if gay men are represented ever in media, and it's just exactly the same. It's just kind of following on that trend. And another thing that's really interesting about the book is that how do you represent um, authenticity of character when you don't necessarily have the language to describe it? When you don't necessarily have, so you don't have the language that we have nowadays, and the um, the ideas we have about identity. How do you represent that in a book and still be authentic? And it's a very complicated thing and I don't have any answers so I just, I'm just saying that <laughs> reading the book and watching the film made me think all of these things. In the movie, in the way that it's di different, because I know um, uh, some people said to me that they, they have seen the movie and haven't read the book, um, in the movie Valentin uses quite a few uh, gay slurs. He, I don't remember him doing that in the book, and if he did, I certainly didn't notice. Um, but he uses quite a lot in the in the film, and I think what this the effect that this has is that it, it it makes him more aggressive and it makes him more homophobic and it makes him more of a kind of sympathetic character to a kind of a homophobic audience who might have watched the film or a, you know an audience who might think um, that there is something wrong with being gay as some of the audiences may have at the time um, that the film was made. So was the film made in the 70s or the 80s? I don't know, it felt very much like a kind of um, late 70s, early 80s film. And Valentin in the film, he, he seems to have sex with Melina almost out of like, out of guilt because Melina does something to kind of, kind of help him. In the book, it's a lot more drawn out, that kind of scene where he kind of helps him because he's, he's sick. Um, and it, it's kind of, it's very tender and it kind of it takes a long time to build up to the time when they do actually have sex and it seems like a logical extension of their friendship whereas in the movie it seems like he's kind of just like oh poor little gay boy nobody loves you uh, you're gonna be alone forever your life is really miserable um, and out of like sympathy and guilt he has sex with him um, and actually it's really interesting the fact that it, in dialogue I wasn't expecting a sex scene to be described and for to actually be quite graphic but they somehow managed it somehow managed it but in the movie, uh, Valentin doesn't seem to express any desire for Melina. But I think in the book, it, it comes across completely different. It does come across like he does actually have some desire. He just actually wants to do it. He does actually feel that closeness and that connection with Melina. Whereas in, in the movie, like, not at all. And it was really interesting watching the film after having read the book because it kind of helped me kind of see the book in a slightly um, 
just see, see more depth to the book and depth to the characters that I hadn't quite realised was there and it allowed me to kind of acknowledge oh yeah actually they do have this very kind of like tender relationship and they do have this very kind of like logical um tra 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 trajectory can't speak they have a logical path that they go on Anyway, I think that I've rambled enough. Um, Kiss of a Spider Woman was a really interesting read. I, I really quite enjoyed it. Um, and I would highly recommend uh, that you pick up a copy of it as well. I think it is a classic of LGBTQ literature. If you have read Kiss of a Spider Woman, I would love to know what you thought. Um, if you've watched the movie as well, or instead of, if you haven't yet read the book. Anyway, either way, um, do let me know your thoughts in the comments. I have noticed recently that quite a few um, comments that people have left me have been deleted um, by YouTube so it's just a, a reminder that I have to put up every so often on my channel. If you use the word queer in a comment, as many of us do when we're discussing LGBTQ literature, YouTube just deletes those comments because it thinks that queer is a slur and I can't do anything about that. They don't go into like a queue for me to um, approve, they just get deleted. Uh, so I get a notification that there's a comment and I can see a bit of it but it's just not there. Um, and I've noticed that happening with quite a few people recently. So unfortunately, don't use that word in your comments. Um, thanks YouTube, so annoying. Anyway, um, so yeah, so do leave me a comment. Don't use the word queer um, or YouTube will just delete it. And until next time, um, thanks so much for watching.